All right, Brad Clark from Rigging Dojo. This is an answer to a question that came up on Twitter. How do I mirror the pose of an object that, uh, or bones, in this case, um, that doesn't work with pose mirroring because it's not a character and it's not in the character extension? So in this case, we've gone over to Maya and I've made a skeleton and mirrored the skeleton here, mirrored the joints with behavior on. So we can see if I show the um, local axes. Local rotation. You can see that here x is down and here it's inverted. So when we rotate these joints, they, they mirror. OK? Um, in Motion Builder, in order to, to create a mirror pose tool, we can use a constraint with a, a relation constraint. So I'll right click and insert a relation constraint. And then in Motion Builder, we have a target skeleton and a source skeleton. Now, right, if I have this set up to rotate and translate, and I go to my mirror constraint, you can see that I'm getting mirrored behavior. So the rotation would work automatically because there are already mirrored skeletons, but translation, we have to do something different. So let's go ahead and uh, let me show you one other thing to make this usable though. So to turn this on and off to make the, make the mirror happen, we need the activation um, button, which is kind of a pain. So if you have a control object, let's say this is our main animation node in properties, um, I can select this constraint and the active button I'm going to Alt, drag onto the skeleton, and drop it and create a reference. So now, whenever I'm animating, I can just turn this on without being in the constraint window, and it's going to pop over and keyframe. Uh, sorry, it's going to update the, cons the, uh, the pose. Um, I can select this now and keyframe it. And then any other poses I want to actually keyframe, I can go through and keyframe. And now any of those poses, if I turn the constraint back off, should match. So now this is working without the constraint. And I, we can see that by moving the animation, if I offset this. So now I have mirrored animation but it's no longer being driven by the constraint. So to make the pose tool, just have the active system set up, and then you want to be able to keyframe this group. Uh, there are a bunch of ways to make this easier to keyframe, of course. You can create custom keying groups in the properties editor. You can go to keying groups and uh, combine things so that when you keyframe this pose, it creates a key on that group as well. Um, you can create global or local. So Explore that, um, and I've done other training on that. But for today, I just want to show you how to set this up if you've not ever thought about this before. So in our constraint, you can see that I've got uh, the source skeleton and the target. And then up here, um, I've got a basic set of connections. So in relation to do this, we'll just grab our, our source, and I'll drag this in and say sender. And so now I have my skeleton nodes and right now they're all global by default and then I'm going to grab my target and drop these in as receiver then I need to connect them but first I'm going to select them and switch them to local transformation and then I'm just going to go ahead and connect up rotation uh, let me turn this off rotation to rotation so now we have a mirroring rotation system but translation needs to be split apart um, so if we drag this directly, it's going to just connect up and give me local transformation. Uh, instead, we need to create a vector to number and add a multiply in here to basically multiply the x value, x-axis that we're trying to mirror across, um, negative, multiply by negative 1 to basically invert this number. So if we show all the values, you can see this is sending out 2.21 and it's giving us negative 2, 1. So when I translate this over, 
the local value for that node is getting driven. If I'm in, in global here, it's mirroring all those values. Okay, so that's the way that works. Um, you can go over here in the system for vector and uh, um, or converter, sorry, and go to vector to number and we drag that out. And so you pipe the trans uh, translation in. That's one way to do it. The other way is to simply go to number and drag out a multiply. So when we drag out multiply and drop it in here, when you connect a vector output to a number, it's going to automatically add your converter. And so then the same thing when you connect the output, it'll add the converter. And then you can just convert, uh, connect directly across without um, having to do any other connections. And then you have your multiply for this set value. All right, I hope that helps you out. Um, give it a try.